Welcome, I'm the Conspiracy Man. In this series, we'll be blowing the lid off many of the world's biggest conspiracies that the man doesn't want you to know about. Gluten-free diets are increasing in popularity in the West, with surveys saying up to a third of Americans are avoiding gluten or cutting down on how much they eat. There's no shortage of celebrities and sports people preaching the health benefits of gluten freedom. It supposedly helps with weight loss, gastrointestinal health, well-being, and energy levels. But there is no clear evidence avoiding gluten is beneficial, aside from helping a select few who are allergic to it. Gluten itself is a protein found in wheat, but not in other grains like rice and corn. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder caused by a reaction to gluten. Celiacs can't have gluten because it will make them sick and can cause long-term health problems. About 1-2% to of the populace have celiac disease. Of course, that's if we assume celiac disease is even real. It might be a made-up disease like AIDS. There are also people with non-celiac gluten sensitivity which might affect up to around 10% of people. This gluten intolerance is controversial, as there's debate whether it's real or not even caused by gluten, but by other things like FODMAPs, which are present in many gluten-containing foods. Me? I ain't scared of gluten. I eat gluten for breakfast. Literally. Gluten-free foods have a health halo. People perceive foods are healthier if they are labeled gluten-free. Many people go on gluten-free diets in order to lose weight, even though gluten-free alternatives tend to often be higher in calories and fat than their gluten-laden originals. It's so attractive to consumers that companies love to put gluten-free on their products, even on obvious products like rice or even water. Gluten-free products and gluten alternatives tend to be more expensive than their gluten-filled counterparts. This, combined with their growing popularity, has made them lucrative, with gluten-free products being a multi-billion dollar industry. This gluten-free obsession has spread well beyond people who actually have problems when consuming gluten. This whole movement is not a random fad that grew organically. It's a fiendish scheme masterminded by various celiac associations. If they can't have gluten, then no one can. The idea is to get normals to consume gluten-free foods, which means supermarkets and restaurants will offer a lot more gluten-free options that celiacs can take advantage of. This has happened before. In the 80s and 90s, the soy milk fad was created by those with lactose intolerance. Before this time, most dairy products contained lactose-containing cow's milk. But then soy milk was cast as being super healthy and cow's milk unhealthy. And now supermarket shelves are packed with not just soy milk, but almond, rice, oats, basically anything you can make milk out of. And cafes stock all these milks so hipsters can get their soy macchinos. The upside being the better availability of lactose-free dairy products for the lactose intolerant. I suppose, is this really even a bad thing? People with celiac disease and gluten intolerance benefit greatly from not just all the gluten-free alternatives, but from many products that use wheat-based products in them now using gluten alternatives. And the only real victims are the idiotic fad dieters and foodies needlessly consuming gluten-free products. Which food allergy group will use this tactic next? Maybe those allergic to peanuts will try it, spreading rumors among the trendies and snake oil salesmen that peanuts are unhealthy and uncool. You may scoff, but next time, they might come for you and your family. 
favorite food. Provided I am not taken out by the powers that be, I shall return. If I don't die from an allergic reaction to benzedrine. What conspiracy will I be digesting? Well, let me just say, performance enhancing drugs. Scared? You should be.